It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm the Chief Scientific Advisor, and that kind of means two things around here. The first is uh, I get the budget, and I'm allowed to spend my budget on basically uh, science and technology and do all the cool stuff. Um, and so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about where we're placing our big bets and where we think the future is going in the science and technology area. The second thing I do, though, is I wander around uh, the MOD headquarters and challenge people. And I'm well known for that, I think, these days. And I sit on the Investment Approvals Committee, and I kind of say, are we really heading as a defense organization in the right direction? So I'm actually going to start my talk by saying a little bit about defense modernization uh, and where that impacts on our thinking around this sort of area. So uh, I think it's pretty clear uh, there are two intertwined issues that we're trying to deal with at this point. One, I think everyone's familiar with, in fact, both of them, really. Uh, the fact that the threats are changing, uh, they're very grey, we've got no idea where they're coming from in many cases. Uh, it's a really challenging environment in which to think about how you deter and potentially defeat uh, an adversary. At the same time, technology is changing at such a rapid place, and defence basically doesn't own 99% of it anymore. It's out there in the commercial world, and so everybody really has access to it. And so there are two kind of intertwining things that make up for a very, very complex environment. And that really says to us, we've got to think again to modernize basically what defense is thinking about and the way it approaches things. And I think most of you are aware, in the UK at least, we are in the process of thinking about how we should be modernizing ourselves. I think there are, whoops, this has gone ahead a few steps. Uh, I think there are basically four pillars to where we're thinking about modernization. The first is very much around foundations, and it basically says we've really got to rethink the way that we put ourselves together in a digital sense. Uh, we have to think about how we gather information, how we use information, how we understand what we're doing, how we organize our deterrence, and how we go about actually using that information. I think the other thing that becomes very clear is there's a big issue around C2, and I don't mean C2 in the narrow sense perhaps of what Army does, but C2 in the sense that most of the ways that we're going to fight wars in the future involve all of government. It involves finance, it involves a whole range of different things. And so C2 must be really cross-governmental, as well as being multi-domain, as well as the fact that we've got to be able to update software the same way you update software in a Tesla in the future. That is, every time that vehicle comes in to have a refuel, the software is updated and reused and so on. So we've got to think very differently about the foundations on which we build the defense systems uh, that we use. Yes, there's a technology element. I personally like the phrase modern deterrence. I think about basically how I'm going to use not just information but mass and effect and how I'm going to use that to influence, to deter, to de-escalate, to do things other than just shooting people. And I think it's a very important concept, the fact that we need to actually start developing technologies that fall short of just kinetic effect. If in the sense you get to the kinetic process, then in some sense you've lost. And so we need to start filling up the, what we can actually do between asking someone not to do something and shooting them. Okay? And there's a huge uh, gamut of technology in that space. As has been mentioned a few times, information advantage, which is the word that we use around main building, is this whole process of using information, getting information, and trying to actually exploit it for deterring and defeating what goes on. But also it's this combination with mass and effect and different enhanced capabilities. I think what it isn't, though, in technology going forwards are platforms. And increasingly, I think we've got to move away from platform thinking, which is typically what I tend to see when people come for investment approval uh, in main building. The third element I think that's very important is skills. Um, we neglect this at our peril. We need to think differently about how we command, how we do information maneuver, how we use synthetic environments. And I think we've also got to come to the grips with the fact that more automation and more AI means less platforms and less people for the same effect. And somehow we deny ourselves that insight, and we really need to come to grips with it. And then finally, internally, or the operations side of things, yes, we do think about adversaries, we do think about cross-government, but increasingly in an information space where no war is actually deter de declared, we've got to think about permissions, we've got to think about ag agility, about the legality of what we're doing, and a lot of these things are simply not defined. And then internally, at the moment, we are so ponderous, it's embarrassing. All right? We do not deal with innovation well. We do not procure well. We have a lot of inefficiencies that go on internally. So four components, I think, that are going to be critically important to everybody as we try and modern, uh, modernize defense. So in the S&T world, we're kind of addressing this through two main programs. 
The first one is what we've been calling the big bets, and everyone in defence in the UK has sort of heard of these. I think importantly they fall into three main categories, information, effects and skills. And just so you don't miss it, there is nothing in there about platforms. Okay? The future is about information, delivering effects and the skills with which we do that. And yes, I can come back and list a whole range of technologies, but they're the obvious ones. Autonomy, my background, my research background is in delivering large-scale autonomous systems in the civilian sector. And frankly, at this point, defense is a long way behind where the civilian areas are in this space. And certainly marine environments and, to a degree, ground environments, I think, are ready to take a lot more autonomy. I don't think it's in the warfighting role, if you want my honest opinion, but I do think there's a, lot of, there's a range of other activities where autonomy will play a big role. But but equally, it's things like Open Sea too. It's the fact that we need to start generating open architectures where lots of different small companies can bring in machine learning, AI, decision support tools, simulations, a range of different technologies in a very quick and agile manner. And we have to start working at the pace of the commercial sector in this area. Likewise, in effects, we have huge investments in things like our low cost mass, directed energy weapons of different descriptions, modular systems. But I think the big step change conceptually is to really try and move away from thinking of platforms first and effects second to thinking of effects first followed by what platform am I going to put those effects on, whether it is kinetic or whether it's information or anything else. Finally, in the synthetics area, we talk about uh, people and skills a lot. So synthetic environments, increasingly over the last year that I've been here, we've played a lot of war games, sometimes in areas like the Air Force for the first time in 10 years. And it's made a huge difference trying to understand the impact of technology and the way we might deal with that, the way we might program for it, the way we might decisions, the way we might command, the way we might actually start training people in some kind of integrated way. And the technology is there now to really bring all of those different components together and really try and exercise the kinds of new technologies that are out there. And equally for me, I think there is a huge role for things like human augmentation, skills and training, and really trying to change the quality and the process through which we actually start using people. Recognizing again, at least in my book, there will be less people in the future because of autonomy and AI in the armed forces. I'll say one more thing, how to make this real. I think we are certainly seized with the fact that it's not enough to just run science and technology programs. And I like to kind of describe this as the fact, well, we've got a bag of nouns, which are all the big bets, but what we really need to do are all the verbs, that is capabilities, delivery capabilities. And so the real way that we're driving this forward in defense at the moment, the programs that will actually get off the ground are these things called spearheads. And what they actually are, you can see over there in the red box, are example problems, okay? which really bring together all the big bets to really try and deliver an outcome. And I mean by that, an outcome not in 10 years from now, but on Monday morning, and then a week from now, and then six months from now, and a year from now, and we start spiraling it, and we learn through that process, and we actually start delivering. So in the near term, you're certainly going to get things like the way you'd use AI to do predictive maintenance, to do particular types of deployment, to run logistics, and things like that. But in the middle term, you want to start using autonomy. And in the longer term, you want to start replacing manned platforms or other things like that with these sorts of technologies. But to really have a process that is a spiral development and not some massive program, which will take a long time to complete. So the Spearhead projects have certainly got a lot of momentum now, and particularly in the marine environment, ASW, and in the ISR environment, which are dominated by information effects. We are also talking to people like Chris, who we'll talk in a minute, about what we might do in this area in the land domain. So that's how we intend to actually move the whole S&T uh, and the technology agenda forwards uh, in defense for the purpose of modernization. Thank you.